Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'll be talking about behind the scenes of the Magic Crystal Hong Kong movie that I shot in the 90s. Uh, joining me today asking the questions is Robert Clancy, the co-host of Mindset Reset Show. Yeah, well, it's great to be here again. And yes, there's been a, a, a lot of interest in this film from the fans. We've had multiple questions. When are you gonna do the backstory or behind the scenes on Magic Crystal? So today is the day. And uh, first question is, uh, where was this movie filmed? It looked like parts were in um, on location in Greece, possibly at the Parthenon and the Acropolis. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, we started off shooting in Hong Kong. And this actually was the first movie where I shot in Hong Kong that wasn't just alone in Hong Kong that we were doing location. So it was kind of fun. So we shot in Taiwan. And we also shot in Greece, which I was really, really excited about. I've been to Greece before, but it's it was... Well, have I? No, I haven't been to Greece. This was the first time I was in Greece. It was later on that I went there. So I was really, really excited. Uh, and I remember uh, I was there for 10 days and I had 10 days of shooting. So I didn't have any time to go sightseeing. And I did it with Richard Norton. And Richard had one day of shooting. And it was easier for them to bring everybody as a group and back. So they said, Richard, would you mind staying in Greece for 10 days? So him and his wife, Judy, went out and they were sightseeing. And I was so jealous because every day I had to shoot while I was there, even till the last day. But uh, the great thing was, is we did shoot in front of the Acropolis. We did shoot at the Parthenon. Uh, so I got to sightsee a little bit when we were on lunch. I wouldn't have lunch. I'd go in and try to see things. But I remember it was funny because there's no action allowed in front of that and it and no guns. And they would be sneaking the guns in and like, okay, nobody's around. Let's do this action fight scene. So they got that footage for free, just going in and we're just shooting when, when nobody's around. And they had like stunt people like looking, going, okay, here comes someone, hide the gun. <laughs> so was, Interesting. So and, yeah, you're, you're, you know, a lot of people don't know how, how that stuff actually goes down and uh, you know, you're probably sneaking camera crew in there. So I know. Yeah, normally <laughs> when you're shooting, you need a permit to shoot at these locations. Right. And especially you would need a special permit to shoot at these sites. But uh, yeah, they just did it on the so fly. This is like, Hong, Kong, Hong Kong movie making at its best. <laughs> Living on the edge get you like that as well <laughs> yeah so i heard uh so you know i know richard had this big leisure time in greece but there was a little bit of payback i heard from uh behind the scenes there there was there was a little bit of an accident with a sword i i believe yeah we were uh shooting a scene it was me richard and another woman that used to do fight action you know a while back and um we were shooting quite a long time because in Hong Kong, it was it was normal that you could be shooting for you know 24 plus hours, and we were shooting on a schedule like that. And we were both really tired, and we had to fight. And I was fighting him with the sword, and I slid, and he didn't uh, duck, and boom, he got hit in the head. So he has like a scar, like probably about six inches long on his forehead that uh, I left on his face. But, you know, it's part of being an action star. You're going to have, like, problems. So he left. They went to stitch up his head. They threw a stunt double in for a little bit. And then he came back. And with his head freshly stitched, we continued our fight scene. <laughs> and I think he still has that scar to this day. Is that correct? <laughs> he does. And he still reminds me about it to this day as well. <laughs> Uh, another one was, uh, you know, I think this is the first time that, you know, we see you using a spear in a movie and, uh, yeah. you do a lot of weapons cause I know you do the hook swords and, and other swords, but, uh, this is the first time, you know, we see a spear. So what's the backstory on that? Well, you know, I've, I've studied extensively in China and we weapons are my specialty. So they were going to have me fight staff. And I said, can I use a spear and show a little bit of spear movement? And they loved it because it's not seen that often in movies. And I remember uh, when I was shooting that scene, uh, a couple, when I was shooting Shanghai Express, I blew up my anterior crucial ligament and it would heal and then it would go bad. And it, and in the middle of that scene, I blew out my knee and I couldn't even walk on it. So when I did most of that scene where you see me fighting in the square with the spear, uh, I was doing it on a very, very sore knee. And I remember when it went out, it like just kind of goes like this, that it, it, it freaked me out for a second. And when I went to hit the guy in the stomach with the spear, I hit him in the groin and they were like, cut, cut. And I was like, oh, my God, the reaction and that 
uh, didn't hurt him, but you know, I pulled back, but it would have been an awesome shot. I would have left the strike to the <laughs> Yeah, I know. There's a lot of, uh, you know, in that one, that 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 scene, um, that fight scene is used a lot online. I know a lot of fans are, are, you know, into that. And there's a lot of clips up there on YouTube of that. So if you get a chance, go search that up and take a look at it. It's an amazing uh, fight scene. Uh, I know that there were some wardrobe malfunctions for Richard. Uh, they gave him that, that, he had that brown outfit on. And I guess the, uh, the cave that it was uh, that you guys were filming in was a little, little warm, we'll say. And he got very sweaty. <laughs> in these foreign countries there's no air conditioning and you know it's very humid very very humid and they only had that one outfit for richard and i only had one outfit as well but richard was sweating profusely and he'd have this big sweat under his arms so wardrobe would be coming in with a hair dryer lifting up his arm and trying to blow blow it dry it was, it was funny because usually you'll have like a couple pieces of wardrobe but uh we only had one and I remember they said, hey, you know, can we use your pants for the stunt guy because we don't have another pair? And I was like, no, no, you're not going to put him on the stunt guy while he's all sweaty and then I got to put him back on. I was like, no, go find a pair that's black. It's easy to, to fight. But um, the ending fight scene was uh, very unusual. You know, it was a great scene because we got to use, uh, uh, I got to use praying mantis and that really wasn't a style that I was familiar with. So they had to teach me the choreography as we were doing it. And it was quite fun. Mantis is very hard because, you know, it's a lot of trapping with the fingers. And I remember one of the techniques is like hitting Richard in the temple with the thumb. And he's like, oh, no, that's not going to knock me out. And I'm like, yeah, come on, let's do it. So you see the old thumb, the old thumb strike to the temple. But uh, I also did some eagle claw in it. And I that was my own uh, doing because... I went to China to study the eagle form, and it basically represents the eagle. You know, you're shaking up and your feathers come down. So it was an awesome fight scene using the eagle claw and the praying mantis because those two styles, you don't see that often in uh, fight scenes. Yeah, and some of the fans have pointed that out. You know, they, they do know those forms, and they do recognize that that was praying mantis and, and you know, and the eagle. Uh, so they were really uh, focusing on that and asking a lot of questions about that. So there you go. There's your answer as it is. Uh, the next one um, was uh, how, how did this movie do as a premiere in Hong Kong? Because you know, there's been you know some of some of them. Depending on uh, how it goes, sometimes they uh, they throw things at the screen. But I don't think this one had any of those types of uh, endings to it or anything that they would be angry at. But uh, you know, how did how did it do initially? Well, you know, it's kind of funny because it was kind of like a takeoff of E.T. the movie, but it had Venus and uh, the alien in it. The they didn't really add any special effects to it, just that they made it green, and Richard and I would be laughing at it because it would just be this blob with tape on it, uh, like there, and it was supposed to be the most beautiful woman in the world, the Venus de Milo, right? And it, it just did that. And we would laugh because on the, sh on the screening, that's the first time we get to see the movie put together as well, and it's talking, but the lips aren't moving. <laughs> It was so cheesy, but you know what? People loved it. It was a it was a big hit, and uh, it's funny because a lot of the times we don't know what we're shooting. We go on set, and then they tell us, and they tell us what to do. And I remember the director Wang Jing said, "Okay, Cynthia, come in and look up at the ceiling." And I'm like, "Okay, why am I looking at the ceiling?" He goes, ah, "Don't worry, just look up." So I'm looking up at the ceiling, and I'm counting the holes in it. One, two, three. Right when we see the movie. It's like I'm looking up at the ceiling for the first time seeing aliens attack us in the sky. Now, I think that would have been a little bit of important information to tell the actor instead of just look up at the ceiling. Why? Oh, no worries. Just look up. Right. So I'm just looking up, you know, instead of like, ah, aliens, you know. <laughs> well, they cut that together perfectly because it really, you know, you don't you don't notice that you guys are not aware of that because of the way that, that they um, they've you know, uh, editing and everything, it all came together. So it really did pull, pull together in the end. And, you know, you mentioned that, you know, this is like Hong Kong's take on E.T. And I know in uh, Prince of the Sun, it's like Eddie Murphy's Golden Child. Uh, does this happen a lot or, you know, in, in the movies that you've been in that they have, you know, the, they see a popular movie in the U.S. and then they replicate it? Yeah, I mean, I remember watching a movie. I wasn't in it, but they had the music from Jaws. Like, and I'm like... That's like from Jaws. Can you take it? And it's like, yeah, they could because uh, the copyright 
um, infringement didn't work at that time, so they could they could kind of copy anything and use it. Like, cause yeah, Prince of the Sun was just like the the golden child, and um, yeah, and sometimes the cornier the better. People like it. The more corny, the better. <laughs> and that one was pretty corny. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, how did you and Richard work out? You know, the choreography on those fights because you guys do have some some pretty good epic fight scenes in there, especially the ending one. Uh, how did you guys collaborate on that? Well, you know, it was a little. Uh, they wanted uh, Richard to do kung fu, and he's like he's a traditional hardcore Okinawan stylist. So I remember if you look at the scene where we're fighting, he just does kind of like a flower, and then goes into a tiger claw. And he had the hardest time. He was like couldn't get his hands right. And I remember, and he's like, I don't want to do this. This doesn't fit my character. But you know, sometimes you when you're doing a movie, you have to adapt to what the choreography was, and it actually came out pretty good. You know, it came out really, he looked really good, but it took him a long time to do that. And uh, it's funny because same thing with my friend Don Wilson. When we were shooting Death Fighter, he, uh, they wanted him to do Kung Fu, like a lot of hand trappings, and I love that stuff. But Don was like, no, I can't, he could not get the Kung Fu. He goes, no, I just want a block punch, you know, go straight in. Well, so, you know, there are great, uh, great fight scenes in there. Uh, anything else you want to share behind the scenes? The Kung Fu is a little bit, it's tricky. It's tricky to do if you aren't a Chinese stylist. Yeah, anything else, uh, you know, for behind the scenes on that? Uh, anything else you remember? <laughs> Fans, I know that, I don't know if you got close uh, to that alien thing, but it, it looked like it was made out of paper mache. Did you, did you actually touch that or get? I was sitting on a spaceship. Uh, I think, though, the, the funny thing is when I went there, we were shooting, this was shot in the 80s and end of the 80s and i think there was some kind of political turmoil going on where there was some kind of bombing uh in libya and they were saying that the radiation was coming over uh to greece and they were like you know don't eat lettuce don't eat this don't eat anything that would be grown from the ground and then they were telling me they were saying well they're not really happy with americans and i was like oh geez and i'm like and they're like, but we're, they, nobody's going to bother us because we're, we're Chinese and nobody's going to say, but I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. we got a, a, a white American here. And uh, they're going, uh -huh, that's okay. Just put a flag on, on your jacket that says Canada. And I was like so nervous, you know, because I, I was like a young kid. I was still new to movies. And uh, but I, we had a, we had a great time. There was no problems. And and I do remember like one of the scenes we shot on a speedboat. And that was really fun because I love being in the water and this boat was going like really fast. And uh, yeah, so so that was a good scene for me to do. So I was like, oh, I got to get as much fun as I could because I couldn't have an experience of seeing Greece. But later on, I said, I have to go back and I have to really, you know, go into the Parthenon and go into the Acropolis and, you know, really see the history and, and the awesomeness of, of Greece. Well, this was a great movie. I finally got to see it. I do. I did pick it up on Blu-ray. So it is uh, actually a uh, really good uh, definition on that. And uh, I will check it out again. I'll have to watch it now with, with these additional notes and uh, go back and check it. But thank you again for uh, all the insight on this. Yeah, thank you. And uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, keep the questions coming. Uh, I know uh, we love answering them for you. And uh, thank you for the support of my YouTube channel. And if you get a chance, you could go to my website, which is CynthiaRothrock.com. And you can see uh, we have the store there if you want to purchase pictures or DVDs or uh, just drop me a line. I can answer from there. So thanks again, and we will see you soon. Hi, this is Cynthia Rothrock. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. And if you like the videos, please put a like on it and refer it to your friends.